The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. Welcome to the first episode of Work the Left Side. Thank you so much for joining me. And on this episode, we will have a great interview with Mark Haskins. Uh, the dude's awesome. He's just been on such a journey. Um, he's worked in America, worked in England, worked in Japan, worked all over Dragon Gate, TNA, Progress, uh, Ring of Honor. Um, he was just a good guy to talk to and he's got a lot of cool stories so hopefully you know you will enjoy them and let me know what you want in future episodes so yeah here it is work the left side episode one hit me up on twitter at work left and i will see you soon cheers bye bye thank you so much for joining me on the debut episode of work the left side um Everyone, mostly Mark Haskins, uh, just an awesome guy. Basically, I'm so happy to have him on as the as my debut guest, and yeah, just want to pick his brain and talk some stories and just talk the talk with him for a bit. So, hi, you all right, Mark? Hey, how we doing, mate? You good? Yeah, man, I'm all good. Um, still a little bit of horse horse struck, but yeah, man, I'm good. Um, late night last night as well. To be fair, I was up watching the Rumble, so. I have to get myself ready this morning. Yeah, dude, I thought it was all right. Um, it's 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 an easy thing to do to to piss all over the WWE, but uh, they do get it right sometimes. And I thought the Rumble was it was a good show. It left me happy. Now you got that feel good pop at the end. Right. So, what about you though? What have you been up to at the minute? You just obviously enjoying time with the family. Just yeah, just training. Just uh, just being at home, homeschooling the kids. Um, yeah, and really, they're teaching me more than anything else. So, um, yeah, it just trying to juggle everything. You know how it is. Um, we got two kids. Um, you know, so trying to school them, them being in different years. That's you know, it's hectic, but it's fun. You know, it's something that I love doing. I love being around them. And apart from that, just training like an absolute madman. Like you know. I, I kind of feel like I did something to, you know, in my previous life that has made me just be absolutely horrible to myself and punish me in this one, you know, because like, yeah, I've been, I, I love training at the best of times and, you know, the, even um over the past year, it's just, I was just giving me a new lease on life just to get out there, just to do different things, you know, just to train in different methods and just to really mix it up. And uh, I can't wait to, uh yeah, see how I can adapt that to wrestling when I get back. Yeah, I remember seeing some, uh, I think you put it on Instagram a while back, she's like the ice tub thing, like a big ass bowl. Yeah, of- yeah that is one what? part of it that's pretty horrible. Like even a few nights ago uh, when, you know, it was... The water, I basically, I bought this whiskey barrel that I have put in my garden and I fill it with cold water and ice and I jump in there between like five to 20 minutes at a time, right? And, um, you know, practice these different breathing techniques and things that I've I've been looking into over the past few months. And um, the other night I had to actually physically break the ice just to climb into it. It was, it was cold. I had a thermometer with me and I I put it in and it only went down to 10. And by the time I pulled it out, it just dropped off the bottom. I have no idea how cold it was, but, um, um, it's all part of recovery and unfortunately it works so it means i have to do it you know <laughs> so it's um it's kind of one of these catch 22s so i'm like yo i want to i want to recover the best i can and then it just ends up me being having to do horrible things to myself <laughs> at least it works at least you're not doing it in vain um right so. well, Put a whiskey barrel full of whiskey when you got it, or was it just an empty barrel? No, it was empty. Um, but uh, stupidly, I asked for a watertight one, not thinking that they would make it watertight from the outside, right? So I had to kind of like uh, hack my way into it with one of my axes because I've taken up woodwork since being in lockdown as well. It's um, it's been an interesting time. My granddad was a farmer, and he used to make me all these little play sets out of pieces of wood that he found around the farm. So since being in lockdown, that was uh, another hobby of mine that I took up, and I actually ended up building a gym. 
gym out in the back garden. So I've been, yeah, driving the neighbors crazy with all my grunts and groans and psyching myself up for like a big set. And uh, I think they know I'm missing wrestling. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Because, yeah, it's just something sort of so cool about just wooden toys. Um, also, I've got a little dude downstairs. Um, he's three years old. And, you know, when, when, he, when he was born, it was always the wooden toys that we kind of went for, like the wooden train sets, the wooden cars, the wooden just wooden toys in general i just think they're awesome if you're doing stuff like that that, that's awesome as well well i'm attempting stuff like that it doesn't always go according to plan you know so uh yeah some of them you kind of have to like you know chuck away when the wife isn't looking so she doesn't think like less of you as a as a man for not you know making terrible woodwork (laughs) yeah sure that's not the case dude but uh no that's that's let's say as long as you're keeping yourself busy at the minute that's the key thing as well uh because yeah you know it sucks for everyone obviously um i can only presume how desperate you are to get back in the ring get back into doing what it is that you know you're good at what you love what you've got the passion for uh, i think anybody that sort of seen you in action knows you've got that passion man because say i've i saw you way back in the day um in one pw i saw you when you was a chav yeah man it's uh yes it's obvious for anyone that's a wrestling fan you know what you're doing you love what you're doing and you're passionate about it um so i mean when everything does get back to normal what's the plan man what's the what's the future Obviously, you still signed with uh, ring of honor yeah but it's still very much the it. contract i read somewhere that you'd extended the contract of ring yes, of honor. the contract expired at the end of last year and we had uh talks and you know ended up extending it um until the end of this year and then i guess we'll see how things are looking then um you know I, and i mean now's a super uncertain time we have no idea where things are going to be in the future or when in the future things might be able to to get back to resembling you know something that we knew before do you know and this uh yeah it's um it's a, it's a daunting time, but I also try to always think of like seeing the opportunity when you think there is none, Do you know, like if now going back to things, it feels like the everything, the wrestling business included is going to be starting over because everything that once was, you know, might potentially not even make it out of the other end of this, this pandemic. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still with ring of honor, you know, they're still, um, doing their thing. They're using American talent. They've brought in a lot of guys, um, over the past few months that, you know, We've been uh, stuck in with COVID, and uh, also to their credit as well, they've taken care of the entire roster. Like you know, yeah. there were people who they were um, going to be bringing in for just a, a you know a one shot show, and then they ended up paying them through the uh, through this whole time that we've been sat at home. So uh, yeah, big props to them for taking care of of every yeah. in the Ring of Honor family. That's really good, especially when you hear about other companies letting like a huge amount of people go and whatnot to to hear of a company that's actually you know looking after everyone when it doesn't need to. Yeah, that's cool. You know, it's got to, you got to appreciate stuff like that. I think it's, 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 it speaks volumes for Ring of Honor. You was at Madison Square Gardens last uh, couple of years ago, weren't you? Yeah, Ring- yeah, I was. How was that? It was great. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, I've always wanted to wrestle at the Garden, and I was so excited. Um. Yeah, a couple of days before, uh, I just decided to buy my wife a plane ticket so she could come out and watch me. So um, I dragged her out to New York City with me. We um, you know, did a couple of days promoting and then uh, had the show itself. Um, you know, hitting Bully Ray with a kendo stick is so much fun. So any chance that you get to do that, seriously, anybody out there, if you ever get the opportunity to wallop him with a, you know, a steel chair or something, take it. It's so therapeutic. And yeah. Um, you know, um, in a wrestling environment, of course. But don't just jump in with it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, this is gonna hardly run. Right. So, but anyhow, anyhow, the garden. Right. So, um, no, the garden was great. It was, it was awesome. You know, you step through the curtain, and it's one of these weird experiences where, you know, when you start off in, in wrestling, like you wrestle in front of practically nobody, and then suddenly you step through the curtain, and there's twenty thousand people there, and you think, oh, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> all right i best go wrestle and then you just kind of go down and you know do your thing and uh it was awesome i, I remember after the match i was blowing kisses to where i thought my wife was sat in the crowd because i wanted her to know that i loved her i just you know appreciated her support and uh it turned out that she was sat in a completely different area of the arena so i hope i made some fans <laughs> tonight <laughs> so you got some random fan there thinking oh he loves me <laughs> haskins really likes me <laughs> yeah <laughs> But you, know, you say you had to drag her to New York. I'm pretty certain that's uh, an exaggeration. I, so she was quite happy to go. 
Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. She uh, she yeah, she smiled the entire way down to uh, to London and the entire flight there. She was buzzing for it. So uh, yeah, yeah, maybe dragged is uh, yeah, a bit of an overstatement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. So I mean, yeah, see, so MSG. Would you sort of say that's the best venue you've you've wrestled at for now? I mean, so far, yeah, yeah. It's 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 kind of like you hear people calling it the mecca of wrestling. Yeah, you know, kind well, of like, I think that I mean, it's it's a you know, it's a building that has so much history. Like you know, every name and and in every industry has you know has has performed there. So it has this uh, feeling to it that you know you're you're stepping up to you know a, a certain level that only a certain amount of performers have ever have ever got to and um you know being a part of a show with ring of honor in new japan um you know over that weekend the excitement the feeling in that building was incredible and uh yeah that's something that i'll, uh, I'll cherish for the rest of my days for sure that's awesome man. that's well deserved as well um like i sort of said i remember seeing you when you was in the dome in doncaster so plus that was like pretty much near the start of your journey. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, those chav days, they were they were the very first days. I I uh I was a referee for a year and then I think I attacked somebody with a steel chair and turned into a chav and <laughs> <laughs> that was my uh my intro into the wrestling business and it was fun it was a lot of fun like it was um because i mean it's just it's fun being in that role anyway do you know what i mean just you know purposely going out there to wind people up and it's something that is so especially in the uk is like you know uh despised by normal by almost everyone right like it was just it was so easy it was you know, to go out and just instantly be hated um and we had a lot of fun doing it it was uh yeah <laughs> good few months that that's it and then obviously you know from the chav days um it wasn't that long after that like you obviously started getting into um Dra dragon gate you've been through dragon gate aren't you one of the british guys to have yeah. Within Dragon Gate, obviously there was you. To go now, uh, I was out there, um, out in Japan. I was uh, for there for I think almost a year in the end, and I ended up teaming up with Pac um, a lot, which was pretty cool. Like, it's, especially around that time in my career, I had so many mad matches, which I wish that I could rehab now. I think the first night that I did a match for Dragon Gate, it was uh, Alistair Black, then known as Tommy End, versus the Young Bucks. It was him and me versus the Young Bucks. Um, I wish I could have that match now because I know it would be so much better than it was back then. You know, or, um, getting to wrestle guys like Shingo. Um, you know, I got to wrestle everybody on, on the Dragon Gate roster. It was really great. Um, especially only a few years into the business, they made sure that I got to work with everybody, and I felt like I got the chance to learn how everybody's pacing was different. Like there was nobody that you, you know, you didn't have to work. You know, it was everybody worked with each other it was great and it was um definitely at that point in my career i think it was only maybe three or four years in um after having debuted it was you know uh, having that chance and seeing how things are different to how shows to how things are at tv to fit how things are at pay-per-view and just getting to understand the business from a different perspective it was really the first time where we'd had a loop like that rather than just say over here where we have just one-off shows here or there or you might have a, a run of shows at that point in time but it was it, it never felt like it built to anything it was just a, a you know a week of a, a weekly schedule of shows as you may know um you know wrestling on the camps over here or wrestling in town halls it was you know it felt like it had a very different style to things that you would do out in japan on a regular basis yeah i was going to say that seems to be the right of passage over here is the the holiday camps in it you've got like sort of like eight week nine week um ritual of just traveling to skeggy and uh, minehead and all these different things then you're going off and doing dragon gate <laughs> stuff that's like oh shit I have to tell you this. I do have to tell you this. So th this combines the two, right? So I was in Dragon Gate. The last show that I did on the tour was uh, Ryogoku. I hope I'm saying this right. Ryogoku Kukujun Arena, um, which was, I think, like they said, anywhere between seven to 10,000 fans, right? It was live on pay-per-view. By far, at the, this point in my career, the biggest show that I'd done. Similar thing. Step through the curtain. Wow, there's a lot of people here. Okay, I'll go wrestle, right? So I'll go and wrestle, do my thing. I think literally the next show I had when I got back to the uk was on a holiday park in uh i think bogner regis where the it wasn't butlins but it was a different place where the roof was so low that once you were in the ring you like the roof was here 
right? And so we've gone from wrestling in front of like 10,000 fans to wrestling in front of about 70 people in a ring that you couldn't leave, leave your feet in. And as the diversity of wrestling between one moment feeling like, yeah, superstar, and then the next being like, oh, we're back here, okay. <laughs> Keep your feet firmly on the ground as well. You couldn't jump in the ring, so yeah, you had to keep your feet on the ground. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, that's awesome, man. And then obviously, it wasn't too long after Dragon Gate, it was TNA, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I was with TNA, uh, I think for maybe a couple of years, so sort of on and off. Um, yeah, and uh, that was another experience that I won't forget. And uh, yeah, it was it was a great opportunity to again to be in the back and uh, hang out with a lot of people who I'm still friends with to this day. Guys like Alex Shelley, who I got to wrestle uh, about a year ago now. Oh wow! Um, and um, it was great to yeah get to have a match with him in Ring of Honor last year because we were both in TNA at the same time. I think we maybe had. A match that lasted maybe a minute on TV, and that was about it. And I never felt like we got the chance to do what we could have done, and then we got to do some of that about a year ago now. Yeah. So, so you obviously you um, you there when, with Doug Williams, weren't you? Everybody kind of praises Doug as being one of the the best workers from what I've obviously read and you know seen in interviews and stuff. Um, how did you find it with Doug? Well, he's all right, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to big him up are you you're not going to give him that pop well he's okay he does all right for himself he's um i mean no he was you know at that point in time especially like i was a fan of the old uh the fwa when i'm uh, basically how i got into british wrestling was um a friend of mine took me to uk revival i remember doug williams wrestled eddie guerrero that night um I got to yeah see him. I started going to FWA shows, and and Doug was top of the bill. You know, he was um he was always on top. He always had one of the best matches of the night. And um, early on in my career as well, I got to spend a bit of time with him. He came down to our training center, did some training with us, brought over some guys from uh, Pro Wrestling Noah, who I got to get in the ring with and roll around with. So, um, being around somebody of that caliber of talent, especially that earlier on in your career, can really help mold people in the right way. Um, so it was great getting that chance to be around Doug and especially going into to TNA as well. Um, and I think he, I think he appreciated having some, uh, someone to blame everything on as well, which is where exactly where I fit in. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so much fault. yeah, it's just, yeah, uh, just this kid in it, this British guy. <laughs> um, I've got a mind blank. It was Aldis in TNA at the same time as you, was he part of the British contingency at that time? Yeah, yeah, he was. It was him and Doug and uh, Rob Terry, I believe. And uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, they were, they were good guys, and especially Rob Terry as well. Um, I remember um, one day I got him to give me a lift to the gym, right? And um, I mean, I mean, anybody who does know, I'm five foot six, right? And at this point in my life, I was maybe 160 to 170 pounds, right? I'm relatively small. And anyhow, the Rob Terry, who's just looks like the Terminator's dad, right? Like he looks like um he yeah, he looked like sub focus and the Terminator had a baby and he came out right because he's just this massive dude and like this massive Welsh guy, like absolute tower, jacked as hell as well. And as we're going into the gym, I'm like, So were you training today? And he's like, I don't know, I might do a bit of back. And I'm like, All right. And he's like, What are you training? I'm like, I'll do anything, I'll train anything. And he's like Okay, and I just I let the bait sit, right? And then he kind of says, like, do you want to train back with me? And I'm like, all right, let's do it. So I go in and I smashed a ton of pre-workout right before I worked out, right? Because I was not gonna like, you know, let him let him off. So the first exercise I think we're doing something in like he does uh, like 20 reps. I'm like, how many reps do you do? He's like 20. I'm like, okay, this is just a warm-up weight, so I knew I could do it. So I get like 21 reps out, right? And I'm like, oh, I did 21. And he's like, <laughs> Okay, so then he starts, yeah, he just starts smashing reps out, and he's like, you know, he gets 21, and I'm, then I try and get 22, and then just constantly I'm just trying to bait him, because, like, there's no way I can physically lift anywhere near what he can, but I just wanted the story to be like, yo, I lifted Rob Terry, bro, <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah, so if anybody asks, that is what happened, but technically speaking, it did, but in reality, he could probably eat me for breakfast. So, <laughs> you took him to school. That was it. You showed him who was boss. <laughs> so, with the uh, reason I mentioned Aldis is, see, I'm watching you at NWA a few years ago, um, and I noticed they were. It looks like they was on the verge of doing a NWA Ring of Honor collab. It seemed like those guys were appearing on each other's shows, or they was teasing NWA on uh, Ring of Honor. 
And I just didn't know if there's anything like selling pipe works or how you would feel about going up against, would you want a chance at the £10 of gold? If that opportunity was given to you, would you snap the hand off? Oh, absolutely. You know, I am very happy to hold any championship anywhere in the world. Um, just don't ask me to look after it because I will forget it and leave it somewhere. Yeah. But um, no, I I mean, why wouldn't you? You know, if you're not in pro wrestling to be the best and, you know, proving you're the best, then what are you doing here? Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, I have no idea what's in the in the foreseeable future for NWA or Ring of Honor. Um, it was a very exciting time in wrestling right before, you know, COVID hit. And who knows what the future may hold, but let's hope there's something bright. Yeah, it sounds like I was kind of in the back of my head. I kind of had it. I'd already sort of fantasy booked with the NWA thing and Ring of Honor did do the collab and start you know, doing like fantasy matches. Yeah, I'd already kind of booked you against Aldis and I was like, that's, that's one of the matches, you know, that I would want to see just right. because as well of your history there. It just made perfect sense to me. I was like, yeah, I didn't want to see those two guys go at it. So fingers crossed, you know, it might it might happen. Uh, if not, yeah, it's I'm sure you'll, you'll get another chance at the Ring of Honor belt. So... You did TNA, you've done Dragon Gate, um, and you came back to the Indies, well, I say the Indies, British wrestling, after the injury with TNA, uh, and you pretty much smashed it then, continuously. Um, I, was, you know, I was dropping through the matches that you had, like your, your Southside, um, NG, I totally forgot the name of the promotion, I was in Hall, I want to say uh, NWA, yeah. NGA. NGW. NGW, that's it, sorry, dude. Totally flustered. Uh, yeah, so I can remember seeing your match against Devitt um, at Southside. That was, at that point, nobody knew too much about Devitt in the UK, unless they were super smart. Um, I, I pretty much watched it on the back of, it was one of your matches. Then it kind of introduced me to, to Devitt. How did you find it coming back to the UK after, obviously, you know, being in TNA? Um were you deemed? Were you looked at as the guy who had the experience that people wanted to pick your brain now, or were you still this kind of like, like just Mark? I have no idea, man. I um, yeah, people might have looked at me and thought like I might know something or two, but I, they'd probably be wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I think I don't know. I think there's a. I'd like to think I was respected by my peers at that point. Like you know, I feel that. Um, personally i was going through a lot at that stage in my life and i don't feel like i have i handled with it entirely well um so i know that i feel like at that point in my life i could have i could easily be a real asshole um and um yeah i i you know i think that that was something that i kind of uh you know got worried about over a certain period of time is just when things don't work out the way that you necessarily wanted them to you know you can um end up being very bitter and not realizing you know the seeing things for what they are and you know seeing things as a you know like trying to see that opportunity when you feel like there isn't one do you know what i mean yeah. uh, and uh yeah i you know i've always uh, only ever tried to just do the best i could with every opportunity that i've been given do you know what i mean and um you know i didn't the whole time that I was with TNA, I was still wrestling um, in the UK. Uh, I think I was only got sort of cut short for a few months, so it, it never really felt like I left. Um, and just trying to go out there and have the best match of everybody that that you could, you know, and go and try and help people in any way that was possible. You know, I feel like around that time, so many people were breaking out into different territories. You had people going to OVW, you had people going to Japan, like you said, Devitt and coming back. And you had people uh, like myself going to Japan and they had people going out to Europe and all these different places. So everybody at that point in time was trying to help each other. Do you know, so everybody was trying to get better and, you know, look where it took us over the past few years. It took us from being, um, you know, where British wrestling felt very small time to things taking off, you know, venues doing places like Wembley Arena, places, you know, doing, uh, you know, big shows like the Hydro. You know, when I started out, it never felt like British wrestling was going to be at that point again. And it it sure did. It just took a collective of everybody trying the best that they could uh, to be the best that they could to to get and to try and help each other out to get it there. Do you know? So um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what you know it was in hold for them. You know, and what's in store for the next few years. Um, yeah, and hopefully that this isn't where British wrestling you know comes down and you know gets stuck. Like I want to see it have a, a another another 
uh, time in the light. Yeah, another like resurgence to a point where it just keeps the the curve goes up and up. I mean, I class that as because obviously everybody knew British wrestling from world of sport in the eighties. You know, the larger than life figures. Uh, then it seemed to dip. It kind of seemed to drop out of everybody's mindset. Or if you know about it, you know about it. If you didn't, you know you didn't. Um, I just got into British wrestling quite a while ago, um, but I think I got into it at the right time for the second spike. You had like you had. You, you had uh, Travis, you had Kirby, you had Leggero, you had Joey Hayes, you had all these guys that were kind of coming through at the same time. And I think just all of you sort of elevated it up and the current roster got the benefits of that. Mm -hmm. I think you guys literally so researched British wrestling. That's my, in my opinion. I think, yeah, you, Kirby, I don't, Travis. I don't think it's just the talent. Um, you know? Like, I feel like it took the right promoters, or, you know, promoters working together. And also as well, it took the fans, you know. Like, if it, if we didn't have the fans who wanted to come and, you know, or even talk, you know, about, hey, look, there's this, you know, hot wrestling show in town come down like let's check it out then you know word of mouth goes a long way you know i feel like it took everybody it took fans it took you know wrestlers helping each other it took promoters you know helping out the boys and so forth you know it's it's all about balance and it's about the you know having ambitious people in the right places that, that make stuff happen yeah oh yeah it's definitely a ripple effect but i think you've got to have the talent in the ring to get people excited enough to talk about it to then get more people in there which then makes other people think, right, okay, there's money in this. So there's you got other promoters who are willing to invest more. And yeah, it's like I say it's a spiral effect. It's not one thing. It's a it's like a symbiotic effect where it all works really well together. But I do think the wrestlers are, are key on that, obviously, because you know it's you guys that are putting the show on. Um it's either that or everybody is so bad that you want to watch it because it's fun. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it's, guys, you have got to see this. God yeah. bless you. <laughs> No, it's, it's definitely the, the must-see because it's 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 good, not because it's like, oh, my freaking uh, day, what the hell is going on? But, yeah, um, obviously going through your, your history books, man, when you was working with Progress, you got to work um, with Project Ego, which was obviously Travis and Kirby. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I've, I've pointed out you, Kirby, and Travis were a big part of me getting into British wrestling and enjoying it. Um, you know, Trav, you know, any, any sort of fond memories? Yeah. Um, so the thing I loved about Trav was how uh, he always he had this bond with Jack, my son. Right. Like Jack, um, when he was born, he, you know, within, I think, about a week or two of him being born, he, I took him on the road to a show. Right. So he, he literally grew up um, around a lot of these guys. And, uh, yeah, Travis was always one of the guys who would uh, come and. Uh, hold him and walk him around the venue and you know say like, oh look at this and like they you know be looking at whether it's merchandise or you know flyers for other shows and such and um i always loved how much he loved uh jack and i always loved and found it hilarious how little jack cared about travis <laughs> i remember like Travis would run up to him and he'd be like hey jack hey jack how are you and jack would just look at him and then just look away and then, you know, he, he'd always be stone-faced he'd never be uh you know salad but then when like nobody was looking jack would be like all right travel like, you know let's go and you know, do something so um yeah i i think they got along because they were the same mental age you know they uh they're they were both kids, so they, you know, we paired them up. <laughs> awesome, but yeah, the one person who wouldn't feed into his ego, Jack's just like, no, not having it. <laughs> uh, that was the thing I remember as well. Is he still doing any uh, dinosaur hunting? I can remember that being one of your entrances. We had the dinosaurs out the other day. Um, it was like old times. Like the kids, uh, I think, I think they'd been banned from the internet for some reason. They had done something, you know, their chores or whatever. So they, uh, yeah, they were in the living room and they got all the old dinosaurs out and it was like going back in time. It was, yeah, it was quite mad. He's he's developed a lot since then. He's, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's doing real well for himself, bless him. Okay, five years ago, wasn't it? That, that, like the whole tour, dinosaur hunter entrance thing. Well, I've lost track of time and I think I'm going to say it's about four or five years ago, but it might have been a year ago for us. I think it's about four years ago. Yeah, it was uh, 2017. Well, we now 2021. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the yeah, uh, well, you touched on it before. I just uh, homeschooling, man. How are you, how you how are you coping with that? That's got to be a like I say, two kids, two different sort of areas within the school levels. Are yeah. you sort of smashing it or? 
So they're doing uh, separate, you know, different work. Um, we try and set them up in the morning. Uh, my wife works with my daughter. My daughter's come along uh, so much, bless her. She's you know, learning to read, learning to write. Like, you know, um, she's way back, better at maths than what I am. You know, she's she's doing so good. And then Jack is in is downstairs with myself. And after a lot of screaming and crying, um, just from myself, we finally get, settled and figure out what it is that he's doing and then you know he teaches me how to how to human yes that for, for me personally i'm obviously while all this is going on i'm i'm still doing my nine to five i'm working from home off of a laptop um but i spend so much more time with jensen my, my three-year-old mm-hmm. uh, for me this is a massive positive out of the current situation it's the one thing i can take from it that has benefited me is I'm getting to spend so much more time with my kid. Um, obviously, it's the same with you. You know, if you're homeschooling and stuff like that, you get you get to see a lot more of their progression as they're growing up. So yeah. it's got to be a good thing. Oh, it's awesome! Yeah, it's great. Like it, you know, I I feel terrible saying that, but you know, like I said, look for the you know yeah. the silver li- the silver lining. You know, so um, you know, I've got to spend a lot of time over the past year at home with the kids, and it's been great to to spend that time with them and yeah, help them come along in their development. Oh, so you generally find, like I said, you help each other, don't you? Because it kind of brings you back down, teaches you a bit of like just groundness. And if you can get your head around new maths, I salute you. I, I class myself as a good guy with maths, but I've got a daughter as well who's like 15. Uh, she's done a GCSEs and I'm looking at her maths homework and I'm like, I've not got a Scooby. I, <laughs> I don't get this at all. I can tell you the answer and then like, well, how did you work that out? I'm like, well, don't matter how I work out. That's the answer. No, we need to know how you worked it out. I'm like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> so, yeah, if you haven't come across new maths yet, good luck. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, we have, it's, I've, I think I've got it for the most part. Um, I'm pretty sure. Man, man. But, uh, yeah, I think that my son is very confident in what he does at school. And um, so much so that recently, my wife had to speak to his teacher. This was when we were in the last, when we weren't in lockdown, whatever that stage is, when we're still at home, but you can, oh. the kids are at school and such, right? So yeah, my wife yeah. had to speak to his teacher uh, because she showed him his, her, uh, his maths book. And in it, there, there had been some calculations in the comments box at the bottom. She said, um, are these the right answers? To which my son had written back to her saying, yes, are you blind? and uh the teacher like my wife found it hilarious Vic she was like killed over laughing she had the mask on so nobody could see like her her you know her laughing but as she came up she was like tears in her eyes and it was through her tears that she saw that the teacher did not find it amusing <laughs> at all so it was made even more awkward by that um so yeah, we've had to speak to him about his attitude, but he's a he's a confident lad, bless him. He's uh, he's he's a bit sassy. <laughs> I don't want to expect anything else, um, because as as can be seen by anyone who follows, you know, yourself, you and Vicky, man, I've, I've said it a few times like the coolest couple in wrestling, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I won't expect yeah, I won't expect your kids to be any less sassy than <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, man, I just I've just Again, just I'll stop mid-conversation. Say thank you. Know, thank you for doing this with me. And uh, what's yeah, what's next, man? I mean, it's a hard thing to sort of say, but are you just obviously keeping yourself in shape, ready for the core? At some point, we're going to get back to a stage of normality. Yeah, um, so. What happens then? Do you stay in the UK? Are you going back to America as of when you I can? Mean, who knows? Who knows when we'll be out of this um, situation? Who knows what things are going to look like at that point? All I know is, is that between now and whenever that may be, I am every day growing and doing something different that I feel challenges me to be the best I can be. Um, yeah, over the past year or so, I've done a lot of, like I said, like horrible training things at home. Um, I took on a challenge. This is a great challenge if anybody wants one. Um, you know, obviously do it when the time permits, but basically running for taking on the David Goggins challenge, which is running four miles every four hours for 48 hours straight. 
um that was i did that back in june that was quite fun he's got one coming up in march which i would love to do but it obviously depends on the the restrictions um doing different things like you said earlier about the you know the ice baths and such they're great um you know you know, taking on different challenges, like doing a hundred pull-ups a day, a hundred push-ups a day, a hundred squats a day, or even more, you know, like going for a run, uh, over, you know, 8k over the Malvern Hills, uh, with a 10 kilo weight vest on and stopping every five minutes to bust out 50 reps of an exercise and 10 burpees, you know, is, um, and that was, that was in a storm as well. Like basically anything that I feel is really horrible. I will try and do it obviously in a training sense of um you know when it's when it's been snowy get out there you know go and train it doesn't matter what what this predicament is but train your brain into thinking in such a way where you don't let excuses stop you in the last lockdown we're very fortunate that we have a 24-hour gym across the road from our house right so uh, in the last lockdown i was going into well not the lockdown but wherever that period is when we're not in lockdown we we're um going into the the gym at 3 a.m getting up at 3 a.m training from 3 30 till 6 a.m each morning going in there and just yeah annihilating yourself and brutalizing yourself and i feel that you can f- learn so much more about yourself from a spiritual and uh, you know personal level you know and it, that's been the most enlightening thing that has happened over the past year like i said about running four miles every four hours um it's you know when you do that something like that it, I find that it's in those moments when nobody is watching you, which is when like that's when you f- have your most revealing moment. That's when you find out who you are, when everything sucks and you have every excuse in the world to throw out as to why you won't do something and you carry on in that moment. That is when you find out who you are and how you can adapt that to every different aspect of your life. Um, it's been a very empowering time while being off. And like I said, it's, you know, who knows when we'll get out of this whole period, but why I'm using this period for is the most spiritual and physical growth that I can. I have gained 60 pounds in the past six months. I've been bulking up to heavyweight. When I come back to the ring, I am going to be more ready than I have ever been before in my life. And I cannot wait for that moment to happen. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, I've always, you've always kind of struck me as um, a spiritual kind of, you, you like your sort of, your journeys, your, your, those moments of enlightenment, epiphanies. Uh, you, you, you are just a, a very spiritual guy. So that's, that's the impression that I get and based on what you've just said as well. I'm, I'm not, I don't know, yeah. What, how do you feel about the whole spiritual thing? Is, is it something that you just, is it something that interests you? Do you read up on it? Is it sort of uh, sources of knowledge? I think that it's important, especially in the current climate of things, to be able to understand a different perspective. And I think that only some certain environments can allow you to think in a different way. Um, I like I've I've tried to really take note of how um, certain things throughout the day will affect uh, moods. They will affect people. You know, they will affect how you react to things. It will affect your mindset. When we first had lockdown, uh, we have a a small pool table that we set up in the living room. Um, And every morning for the, we would come down and we play pool. And uh, the thing that I noticed is because you need to be so focused on what it is that you're doing, because you need precision, because you need, you know, to be calm, that getting yourself into that head state would affect you for the rest of the day. Do you know, like I felt like I was so much more on it with things like my diet. Like if you look at my Instagram and look at me around the time of my birthday, I was the most ripped I have ever been. I managed to cut down weight. I got to think to about 11 and a half stone, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, and I was, yeah, I was ripped to the tits. Like I genuinely can't believe I, I stumbled across a video of myself chopping wood. And uh, the other day I was looking at myself like, wow, I can't believe how ripped I was back then. I, I do not look that ripped now. I, of gained 60 pounds that's not necessarily 60 pounds of all good weight but it's a lot more timber on the frame you know what i'm saying so yeah. it's um we yeah so it's uh this whole time it's i think that certain predicaments get you to think in certain ways you know like trying to get like i said about getting up at 3 a.m and training on an empty stomach when when you're in the gym at 3 30 in the morning um and it's cold 
and you're tired and you've not got any food in your system and you've had one coffee and that's and you know about half an hour of ct fletcher motivational videos on youtube you know you you get into the gym and you can have any excuse that you want but it's up to you if you want to get that personal best today if you want today to count for something if you want to go in there and make what you do matter then it is up to you to go in there and dig that extra little bit deeper and find whatever that motivation is to push you that extra mile right like you know we i ended up doing uh something uh, what was it called seal fit which was a, a hybrid between crossfit and navy seal workout written by a guy called mark divine it's awesome if you can you know if that's training is something that you're into particularly a you know a strength and you know more intense style of training go and check it out um you know the, those guys are great and we did this uh i think for i think it was about an eight week course uh before lockdowns kind of shut us off from you know finishing it off but yeah it was you know doing that at 3 30 in the morning it sucks but their whole philosophy is embrace the suck right is just you know get used to things that are hard because when things are hard you know hard times create hard people this whole time has been a hard time it's a hard time for everybody globally you know every every everything sucks right now right you know this is going to create you know um this environment will create stronger people you know like it's up to us to to try and you know Sometimes all you have is faith and all you have is hope, right? And just hoping that one day there is going to be a brighter day and there will be. Do you know what I mean? Like we're coming out the other end of this. You know, vaccines are starting to get out there now. Like at least it looks like things are on the move to getting things back to a, you know, a, a better state than what they currently are. You know, it's up to us to to carry that, to carry that burden, you know, of, you know, the world's going to be in one of the worst, you know, economical states that it will possibly would have ever been in. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, it's going to be, you know, a terrible recession session but we're gonna get through it do you know what i mean it just takes everybody knowing that you can just do the best that you can with every situation and just keep moving forward and that's why i hope that everybody is doing whatever it is that you're going through call it spiritual growth or not it's just you know testing yourself as a person and finding out who you are finding out that there is something more to just the mundane do you know what i mean it's like you know find whatever it is that is a challenge to you and then go and conquer that challenge try and level up every day yeah Get absolutely just be the best that you can all you have the moment the only thing you'll ever have is this moment now right and you know, the past is gone. You can't go back to it. You can't do anything about it, but you can change how your future looks based on what you do now. So in this moment, don't look back. Just keep moving forward. Oh, dude, that's awesome. I love that motivational stuff. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, I don't class myself as overly spiritual, but um, I try and like do meditations every day, try and just, you know, to keep myself centered, to keep myself calm, to find the, the inner flow. Um but yeah, I think anything like that, anytime anybody talks about stuff like that, I just think it's brilliant. Um, if people are more open about talking about like the spiritual side of things, it just makes people more aware of it. And yeah, the more you, people learn about that stuff, I just think it makes for the better people. So really, absolutely. Cool. And I think there is um it's something that a lot of people are is, you know, becoming a lot more aware to nowadays as well. You know, um the more that you can just get out there and learn different things, like I feel like any time that you're in a place of learning is a place of growth and that will always help you in, in some way in your future. You know, like um a few years ago I got qualified to be a personal trainer. Um, and by becoming a personal trainer, it helped me adapt and think in different ways in regards to wrestling. So it was, uh, you know, anytime that you can, can can grow in a certain way, you know, you can apply it elsewhere in your life and, you know, just live the best life that you can. You get one shot at it. Do you know what I mean? Like, why be miserable? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you've got something that you want to do, get out there and do it. Because, you know, this is coming from me. And like you said, I wrestled in front of 20,000 people in Madison Square Garden. Do you know what I mean? Like, when I told everybody that I was, you know, all my mates when I was at school, that I was going to be a professional wrestler they laughed their parents laughed well look who's laughing now <laughs> was you that kid in school there did you know from that age that you wanted to be a wrestler i meant to ask you that um earlier kind of thing because that seems like the, the obvious cliched question um yeah when did you know you wanted to be a wrestler was it when you was in school i uh i kind of feel like I didn't want to be a wrestler. I knew I was going to be a wrestler. Like from the age of nine, I fell in love with wrestling. Um, you know, uh, one of my best friends at the, uh, one of my best friends at the time was a kid who suffered from cerebral palsy. His name was Andy, and he brought around a, a wrestling tape to my house. And I think it was um, 
Shawn Michaels versus uh, The Undertaker of Bad Blood, right? And uh, I, yeah, the first Hell in a Cell match. And uh, that was the first match I ever watched. And because I'd been getting beaten up at school and I'd had multiple bloody noses, you know, I felt like I could relate to Shawn Michaels getting beaten up and being, you know, busted open. And then uh, because he managed to, you know, because Kane came out and destroyed The Undertaker and then Shawn Michaels managed to win, you know, I felt like it was the the world where, like, you know, the the poor kid who's getting picked on, you know, you know, manages to overcome the bigger boys. Do you know what I'm saying? So uh, from that point on, I was hooked. As long as a big red monster and a mask comes down and helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I needed in my life at that time was I needed Kane. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, I did well think about the uh, what got you into sort of the wrestling. I must admit. Uh, I'm older than you, so I was. I've been watching Circa. Not I want to say it's the Bret Hart Bulldog Wembley match that got me into it. Yeah, um, my first wrestling memory of, of watching. Um, is that a dream? Obviously, Wembley is not Wembley anymore, but there's still a sort of a Wembley. Do you think uh, at any point we'll have a big, a big ass show in in Wembley Stadium? And I it's got to be warm at Wembley, hasn't it? Well, you know, it would be great to have. Like, I mean, you know. That's a, the kind of I feel like what the beauty of wrestling was though is that like you had um you could have massive shows that were awesome, but you could also have shows with you know not as many people in, but with the right atmosphere, with the right crowd, you can just have this you know literally magical atmosphere in the building. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it would be great to go and you know pack out like a you know a Wembley Arena. Um, you know, it would be great to do all of that, and hopefully one day you know if things you know go in the right direction, fingers yeah. crossed, maybe okay. that's something that will happen. But it's uh. Yeah, I mean, there's no, uh, yeah, no harm in dreaming, eh? That's it, man. It's just like say, it's, it's a, it's a, a thing to aim for, and it's sort of like just a, a goal to achieve at some point. But I agree with you regarding the the audience because, um, it's like music when you go see a gig, um, stadium, uh, uh, concerts are great. But I'm a I'm a boy. I grew up in Nottingham. I used to go to Rock City every week. Mm. Uh, one of my best gigs I've ever been to have been at Rock City. Because it was such a small, it was a small venue. It was the atmosphere there was awesome. Um, and I think that relates to wrestling as well. As much as you, do, I love like obviously MSG is just intense. Sometimes you can get that buzz from like a 800, 900 crowd. I would presume if everything clicks. It's not always about the size of the the venue. No, man, I mean, that's what wrestling about, right, is entertainment. Is uh, It's about having a good time. And I think that you can have a good time in front of, like, a lot of people. And I think you can have a good time in front of, you know, you know a few hundred. You know, I've been very fortunate. Uh, I've managed to wrestle between, um, you know, through the entire spectrum of, you know, uh, fans from being in front of, like I said, 15 people on a holiday park to being in front of 20,000 in Madison Square Garden. You know, it's, it's a surreal experience. And, uh, you know, Everybody just, you know, the best, all that I want to do is every time I go into the curtain is give the crowd the best experience I can. Do you know what I mean? It's just, you know, give the the people who are paying the bills, whether there's 15 of them, whether there's 20,000 of them, whether there's a Wembley arena full of them, you know, it's, um, it's just about giving everybody, you know, their money's worth. And that's something I've tried to do with in literally every match I've ever had in my career. Oh, I can say from the matches that I've seen you in, you have, because um, I, I saw you in Leeds years ago. You was playing in a place called, um, you was wrestling in Tidal Wrestling in Cockpit in Leeds. And um, yeah, I think there's probably about 50 people in there because it was literally in Cockpit. There was Everybody was stood right next to the ring. There wasn't, it wasn't even a big enough place where they could put a rail around the ring. The ring literally went from like war to war. Uh, yeah, you smashed it. And obviously, yeah, I've seen you smash uh, performing larger audiences and literally put on exactly the same standard so from a fan's point of view yeah you're doing it man so that's awesome no, so appreciate it any any words with i'll start wrapping up um because i don't want to take too much of your time but uh any words of wisdom any sort of goals targets you want to sort of set any challenge you want to put out there for anyone you sort of you, you like the challenges you can be really mean and tell challenge people. To you know, before I went into uh, before we went into lockdown, uh, so I share with you my lockdown story. So basically, um, I was flying out to Vegas to wrestle Roosh for the Ring of Honor World Championship as the main event of their. I think it was one of uh, maybe their anniversary pay per view, right? 
So as soon as the plane lands in Vegas, we switch our phones off of airplane mode back to normal and get a text through saying that the shows had been cancelled. So um, straight away, I'd gone from going into, you know, arguably one of the biggest matches of my career um, to then just, you know, however long this is going to be of whatever. Do you know what I mean? And that was something that uh, stayed with me going into lockdown is one of the motivating factors going forward is that, you know, who knows if Ring of Honor will, you know, uh, honor that or not. And they might give me that championship uh, shot if they want to. But if not, then I'm just going to have to come knocking for it. So, uh, yeah, who knows? Who knows what the future holds? But one thing I do know is that that championship is already mine. I just need it to prove that it is. <laughs> Well said. To touch on something you said earlier, you said about uh, as long as they don't give you the championship to look after, have you ever lost a belt? Are you known for losing belts that you, you have in your possession then? or? Oh, no. I have almost driven to a show without it, though. I managed to get, like, to, I think near the motorway and then suddenly realised, like, oh, no, I do not have the championship. But um, the other thing as well is, you know, championships are great, but any time that you have to to carry one around, you realise how heavy they are. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Then, then suddenly you don't want to be the champion of every company like you, you know, <laughs> dreamed of doing. <laughs> you don't want to have that photo where you've got belts just draped around your neck and around your arms. You don't uh, you, want You want the photo, but then you want to lose every championship so directly bad. after, so you don't need to carry them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's um, just... Yeah, I just well, obviously, man, fingers crossed. They obviously gave you the title shot because they know damn well, you know, it's you deserve it. You you put the hours in, you've smashed it. When things do get back to normal, you know, hopefully I'll keep my eyes peeled. Uh, the first Ring of Honor shows when they come back, you will be in that main event look going for that world title. Um, you've earned it, dude. That's literally Thank you, man. On it anyway. So um yeah, any any closing words, anything you wanna sort of sum up? Any wise right, man, just uh, yeah, just um, whatever it is you're going for, you know, do the best that you can, you know, and then you know, hope that one day there is a brighter day. Um, if you want to follow me at this is Haskins on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or go to this is Haskins.com, which is my merchandise site. I was gonna ask you about that because, yeah, I was gonna ask if you wanted to plug that because I was trying to find it the other day and I couldn't find it. Um, I just kept taking me to pro wrestling tees. I was trying to look, you know, I was looking for your merch, and yeah, it kept taking me to pro wrestling tees. So, this is haskins.com, yeah, this is haskins.com. Right. Sorted because I was going to rock up and just be wearing a haskins t shirt, but I couldn't find one. I was just like, damn it. Oh, well, you ruined it now, mate. I know, I know. I'll buy one after the show, I'll buy one after, this. <laughs> but yeah, no, follow Mark on all the socials that have just been plugged. Um, guy's awesome i can't you know say enough good stuff about him um hopefully you've enjoyed the show um take the wise words and mark you know thank you so much genuinely mate it's it's been a pleasure and uh best to the family man just keep homeschooling keep uh keep trucking basically thanks man you too